Okay, so welcome back. This will be part three of my mundane astrology and omens and really just general astrological news events of 2021 that are, you know, kind of interesting to look at from the perspective of a Vedic astrologer. So to reiterate the general idea, um, in Vedic astrology uh, and in general yogic philosophy, everything is consciousness. Everything is this one pure spirit, Brahman, Paramatma, it lives within everything. That's why you can worship everything in Hinduism. I know that some in the Western world, like the idea of idols and worshiping something that has form is weird. But, you know, the masters in India, when they got enlightened, they were like, look, that rock is God. Why don't you just worship the rock? You know, worship it like everything is God. <clears throat> and as such, this creation, everything going on in the creation What's going on within us and what's going on outside of us, there's always a connection and a harmony between that. And so in astrology, it's not just the planets that are giving us signs. Those are just, it's just that Jyotish and the Grahas, this is the super science of occult omen reading and everything. But in, in India, it's called Namita, reading an omen. And this is a whole nother part of astrology so in india astrology you don't if an astrologer they can walk to your house in india and by the time they walk to your house they already have a bunch of predictions ready for you because of what they saw they maybe saw a certain bird flying a certain way or an accident or this or that and they already have a prediction ready for you that's how the old school jyotishis worked <clears throat> and so yeah that's why i'm always emphasizing omens because as an astrologer i mean i can't tell you how many times i taught a free course on that where you know beating your head up over the charts and the details and the vargas are so tough when then all of a sudden you know a crow will just fly by and tell you the answer and that is that is just as much you know consciousness speaking to you as the chart is so with that being said in the west the Western occult traditions, they also believe that the universe is conscious and is constantly speaking back to us. And this is what all the ancient mystery school traditions were about. They had a fundamental understanding that life can communicate back with you. And this is the beauty of the of astrology, the astrology of ancient India was that, you know, you can do mantras to a planet. Like if you want to have more courage and more self-assertiveness, you can do mantras and worship mars you know and it's actually considered that you are looking at mars as a being as a conscious being the planets are conscious beings <clears throat> and they do you know fulfill every definition of a living organism scientifically by the way um they're conscious beings and you can look at them and they can look at you and there's a relationship and this is also why the seven classical planets are a lot more important than the outer planets, which we cannot see with a naked eye. So we don't have an intimate relationship with them like we do with the classical seven planets, sun through Saturn. So with all that being said, you know, in the West, they would say as above, so below. Uh, what's going on up in the heavens reflects what's going on down below. And so with that being said, I wanted to share some something interesting that I actually didn't know about. But back in May, there was uh, a very interesting celestial event that happened around the eclipses back in May that I didn't know about. So you may see now, I hope that I'm sharing my screen. This was written on June 1st, 2021. This was right before the big eclipse we had. <clears throat> and look at that. A a piece of space junk hit the International Space Station, damaging a robotic arm. <clears throat> you can see the picture here. There's a little hole. They show an image of a hole in the arm of the space station. Can anyone think what that might be an omen of? What that might reflect? Well, it's this is very interesting because the eclipse was happening in um here i'll pull up the chart for you guys there was an eclipse coming up in a short while after this and so we were in a classic eclipse season um as you know astrologers are always talking about and the eclipse was happening in the sign of gemini you see how rahu is there in gemini on this date may 12th k2 was in sag 
Rahu was in Gemini. So this was where the eclipse axis was happening. I talked so much about this. I talked about how Gemini is a sign of roadway. Gemini and Sag do a travel, and we've had so many restrictions on travel over this period. We talked about how Sag is the only sign that deals with guns and weapons. We've had so much, you know, violence and talk of guns and shootings and all this going on. Um, we the other thing is Gemini is a sign of the arms, as I kept saying, the arms, the Bahu, Gemini is called Bahu in Sanskrit, the arms or the doers, because the word for the arms in Sanskrit literally means the doers, and Gemini loves to do all this stuff, you know, um, I don't mean that in a belittling way, it's good or bad, depending on the rest of the chart, but Gemini is that sign of doing a lot, multitasking, using the arms, so how fascinating is it that, <clears throat> that during this eclipse period, the space station got struck by space debris, space junk, and it got struck in the arm of all places, that they're literally talking to it as a, ro it's a robotic arm, that is its job. So to me, this is a classic omen of, well, what was going on at that time in May and June was an incredible pressure being put on the planet to actually, you know, take random debris and inject it into your arm and get, a so-called immune protection from a disease, which we now know has proven that these jabs, these procedures, I'm not even using the word because you'll get censored, but these procedures were not useful. They didn't work. They only, they caused far more negative side effects than they helped. And they were not nearly as good as just natural antibodies, which I've shown before, but on here in previous video, but studies were done that showed that, you know, if you just got the, the virus, then you would actually have natural antibody protection from 23 different variants. But, you know, the vaccine only protects you from the variant that's gone now and doesn't even matter. So, yeah, so this, you know, as a lot of nature paths, a lot of smart people that don't just buy into the mainstream media were saying, this is a very dangerous and reckless procedure to try to mandate I don't care what, you know, if you want to, if you took it or not, just say that's fine. But the idea of mandating it is when it gets really bad. And we, you know, there was, there was really, it was not a consensus scientifically. It's a complete lie if you were led to believe that, that it was a scientific consensus, that all these procedures were the appropriate way to go. Um, you know, just follow Dr. Robert Malone on Twitter. I follow him and I see all of his posts. He's the guy who invented the mRNA technology. So, you know. Go straight to the source on these things. So anyways, um, <clears throat> this is an omen of all the people putting random debris, random junk into their body and experimental, you know, gene altering things that maybe ah, this will work, whatever. This was kind of an omen of that because, you know, we got hit by space junk at the same time as all these people were going crazy about the Delta variant. Remember, it was the Delta variant then. And, you know, people, you know, did a lot of maybe decisions that weren't really right for the long term, you know, which is sad. See, Gemini is not a sign of the long term. Uh, Sagittarius is a sign of looking at the long term picture. Gemini can make a, make a decision like this and then have a lifetime of health decisions to deal with afterwards. It's horrible, but it's, it's something that you see a lot. Um, so yeah, what's really interesting is that this is definitely an omen of what the world, what the collective was going on. As above, debris hits the arm of the space station. As below, a bunch of people's arms are being hit with things. You know, like Clapton, he, when he took it, his entire arm wouldn't function. He thought he had completely been paralyzed for days. Um, and the media just called him a crazy conspiracy theorist. <clears throat> Here's another image of it uh, from the the a more official space station -y website. It doesn't really say much else. I tried to get more information on it. This is the only other really fascinating thing that I found about it. Oh, and I found this from a guy named on Infinite Plane Radio. I didn't come up with this, by the way. I found this from another guy um, who had made some really amazing connections here, but he's not an astrologer. And so he didn't see the whole Gemini. I was like, what? This is insane how this is all happening in the sign of Gemini. He was just pointing out how much how interesting it was is it like an omen, you know, um, just that it was happening in general during the same time as all this stuff going down here was going on. Um, 
This is what's really fascinating, though, is that the actual operation that was going on in the space station at this time, see May 12th, was the Operation Celestial Immunity. And then this is a little report on it. You know, research continued full speed ahead. Basically, what they were doing at this time, you guys, they were doing a operation to see about people's immune systems in space. So they were uh, checking people's as it's, you know, yeah, this guy had his eyes checked at the end of the day and da da da. And they were, they were literally doing tests on the immune system while in space, while this junk gets hit in the arm, you know, and while down below on the planet, everyone is obsessively, you know, taking uh, experimental procedures that are pressured upon them by the news which is also ruled by Jim and I. Um, and as we now know, it has not worked out. It didn't work out well, or even worse. Nothing can be, you can't fix this, this sort of virus thing. It's just sort of like Saturn. There's just inevitable things that suck in life. And until our, until our collective consciousness wakes up and kind of matures psychologically and spiritually, there's not much else we can do. You know what I mean? So it's like Ramana Maharshi said, trying to cover the world with, um, you know, you can try to cover the world with leather so that you don't have to step on thorns or, you know, brushy spikes and things. You could do that. It's a lot easier to just wear sandals, though, you know, just learn to protect yourself and then God will take care of the rest. You know, essentially a lot of these problems are just God's business. Um, and if science keeps interfering, it's going to make it worse and worse. Here's another image of this wonderful astronaut uh, working on the celestial immunity study here, um, May 12th. See, it was the same day. Um, there's another image of her working on the celestial immunity study. So I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, this happened. This was a beautiful, not beautiful, this was just a fascinating omen for the general thesis and previous points I've been making about the planetary war this year, about Venus winning against Jupiter. Um, about the whole war on the narrative, the war on, um, you know, people's freedom of choice, um, <clears throat> and how this is kind of an omen that really backs up more of my standpoint that it, you know, that it was a more damaging thing. Now, also, it's worth saying is that the space station wasn't really truly harmed. It wasn't made dysfunctional from this. So that helps as an omen. That means most people weren't killed or ruined by this uh, procedure, but it was still a damaging thing. And that's the thing is that everyone has an immune system that's already working very hard to fight off everything in this world and to just, oh, just give it a bunch more, here, just handle this. Science still thinks that every human has like the same immune system, which is ridiculous nonsense. And it's really, you got to learn about the microbiome if you really want to know about health. So leave it at that. Um, hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope that was interesting. You guys take care.